Hello Abnormal Family. I've got another drop for you today. I hope you enjoy this one as much as you enjoyed the one yesterday. It's doing really, really good on the Bigfoot uh, killing the young man's family as a very sad one. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button for Hunter. It puts him out there and makes the uh, algorithm go up. And don't forget, we got the links in the description if you'd like to support the Bring Hunter Home. Uh, hashtag Bring Hunter Home Now and hashtag fighting for hunter we love seeing that in the comments and uh, his favorite color was purple so we use purple hearts let's get into the uh, encounter i used to live in an old rundown house on the edge of some suburbs near houston texas the place was ancient as well as oddly built for example the kitchen was almost the laundry room which also had the front door connected to it the back door was on the second story because the place sat in the middle of a steep hill. Yeah, none of it really made much sense to me, but it was home for the whole part of my childhood. The back door, though it freaked me out, the fact that it was on the second story made it so creepy. If someone broke in up there, they'd be only yards away Sorry guys, it jumped around on me. Yards away from my bedroom door. And the window, not to mention the big weird flap that was cut out of the bottom of the door. It looked like a doggy door that one of the previous owners had cut into it. We of course nailed it into the place since we didn't have any pets. The week we moved in was pretty uneventful. When I wasn't at school, I was at home helping my mom and dad unpack boxes. It is insane how many boxes a person can fill with personal items they've gathered over the years. Multiply that with each person living in the house and you have the literal 40 hour work week of unboxing that the three of us had to do. A month in, everything looked great. It was finally starting to feel like home. But I dearly missed our old house. I had friends back where we used to live. One night, after settling in for bed, for some well-needed rest, I heard something strange. It was a bumping sound, very subtle, without a pattern. Bump, 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 bump. I couldn't tell exactly where it was coming from. I wasn't creeped out at the moment, just curious. So I got out of bed, and I put on my loafers. The house was absolutely freezing. My dad loved to take the thermostat down to 66 at night. He must have been a snowman. I opened my door, which led into the upstairs hallway. To my left was a spare bedroom and a utility closet. And to my right was the upstairs outside door. As we began to call it, bump, bump, this time I heard it more clearly. It was much louder than before. I turned to my right and another bump. The upstairs outside door shook a little, and then there was two more bumps. Every time the noise came, the door shook. It was like someone was outside hitting the door. Hello, I called out. I don't know why I said anything at all. I can only assume that part of me was hoping someone was simply knocking, and part of me wanted to say something so that my parents may have heard it and come running upstairs. Then there was three more bumps. This time, fear began to settle in. I jumped with each bump noise. With each shake of the door, I started to back up into my room. It was deathly quiet. I couldn't help but stop. The bumping had ceased. I waited for a few minutes. Still, the noise did not return. The night was quiet again. My heart froze when the shadow appeared beyond the faded glass of the door. Someone had just stood up as if they were on their knees and suddenly decided to stand at the attention. They padded at the door, and I could hear nails click and clack on the wood. And then I smiled with relief. It was a dog. I could see its ears, and the movement and the click-clack of the nails was the distinct sound of the dog jumping up and scratching at the door. I must have been the neighbor's animal. Maybe it was just used to using the doggy door with the previous owners. I calmly walked back to the bed and went to sleep. Now this happened every night at the same time. I think it occurred around midnight and the bumping would, wouldn't start. Or the bumping would start. 
I would always, it would always wake me up, but it started to become soothing, knowing that it was just a lonely dog who probably missed a former residence. Maybe a week after that night, something horrifying happened. The bumping came as it usually did. It woke me up, and I tried to go back to sleep. But this time, I heard a different noise. At first, there was a usual bump, but it was followed by a cracking sound. Then came the scraping. It was extremely loud. I definitely couldn't go back to sleep with this noise. I got up and walked into the hallway. I flicked on the light switch that was right next to my bedroom door. I screamed at the top of my lungs. Writing this out, my body is covered in goosebumps and tears swelling up in my eyes. I know it may sound unbelievable, but the very reason I'm sharing this story is not for the sake of attention or to scare people. You should all know that these things are out there. I, just because you're human, because you are an American citizen in the middle of the suburbs, doesn't mean that something terrifying and hungry does not have its eyes on you. What I saw that night will terrify me for the rest of my life. Believe me or not, whatever makes you sleep better at night. The flap to the doggy door lay on the floor, torn from its hinges. The nails that we had placed in there scattered on the hardwood. A mass of jet black fur and snarling yellow teeth tore at the doggy door. Some creature, some animal, was trying to get inside. Then it looked up at me, staying still for a moment just to lock eyes with me. It looked like a dog, except its head was twice the size of a German Shepherd's. This was definitely no dog. Then it suddenly went back to wrestling itself through the little door, biting and snapping in my direction. I could feel saliva land on my ankles from the creature's maw. At this point, it was taken back, walking slowly backwards from the door. I believed, without a doubt, that this was either a massive wolf or a bear trying to enter my home. The moment I saw its claws, I knew it couldn't have been either of those. It had fingers, long reaching fingers with grotesque nails on the tips. They were somehow even yellower than its pointed teeth. They scraped at the floor, shaving up pieces of wood as it tried to force its way in. I continued to scream. I couldn't speak tangible words. My whole body shivered. I yelled out the F word. I heard my dad's voice. He was a few steps from the door. He must have been running up the stairs when he saw it. Casey, get over here, he yelled at me. I shook my head. The staircase started where the upstairs outside door was. Once you reached the top of the stairs, you could turn the doorknob and walk out. I was not going that close to the thing. Just stay there. I'm coming to you. He grabbed at the railing and scooted his way up the steps. As soon as he was at the closest point, the wild beast, it looked up at him with angry eyes and pulled away. My father ran to me and we both watched this, this now still and quiet door together. The thing outside. And I'm not joking. It stood up. We watched it as blurry dark silhouette towered over the door. It stood for a moment, then walked away. After a few moments, my dad took me to his room and told me to stay with my mother, who was sitting up very confused in bed. He ran around in the house, checking the doors and windows to make sure that they were locked. He got his rifle, and we all stayed up in bed, waiting and listening. Nothing else happened that night, but my dad looked pale like a ghost. I never heard the bumping again. My parents decided to replace the door altogether. They even applied a deadbolt. Yet, ever since that night, my father acted strange, worried, even a bit guilty. Eventually, I asked him what was bugging him. He finally told me. That night, when I checked the locks on the doors and windows, he gulped and sighed before he continued. The upstairs outside door was unlocked. This thing could have came in if it would have checked that door. My dad believes it was checking the doors that night to come in. And if it would have checked that door first, I probably would have been its first victim. Thank God we locked the door. So what do you guys think? I think the owners that lived there before probably didn't have any interactions with it seeing that they had a doggy door. So I doubt they had any interactions or they would have got rid of that theirself. Uh... It seems like after it tried to get them and hurt them, and it was unable to, and they seen it, it left and never came back, probably hoping that it doesn't get hunted or 
they would tell somebody. So it probably got away to keep from being tracked. What are your all's thoughts on this? I thought this was a pretty scary one. Um, I would hate to have been him seeing that trying to come through the door, biting at me and clawing. And um, I don't know. That's just my thoughts on it. Let me know what you all think. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep your head on a swivel. And until next time, don't be something's dinner.